but you know, oxalates are a compound that are found in plants and our body also produces oxalates. And actually, you know, 60 to 80% of the oxalates in our body are synthesized by the liver and about 20 to 40% come from foods that we're eating that contain oxalates. So why do we even care um, for a kidney disease? So the kidney's role is to, uh, you know, excrete oxalates and they go into the urine. And if there's excess or too much oxalates in the urine, that's called hyperoxaluria. And that's a concern because then we can see that there, um, there can become oxalate crystals that then deposit in the kidneys. And when that happens, there's more kidney inflammation, fibrosis, and faster progression of kidney disease. So that's why we care about oxalates. But then what does that mean and how does that correlate with food? And there's actually, it's kind of a, a good amount of information, but I think first of all, it's important to understand that the concern is when there is high oxalate levels in the urine and not everyone with kidney disease has that. Not everyone with kidney stones has that, even calcium oxalate stones. And we will do a separate episode specifically on kidney stones and different types. Um, so the purpose that for the purpose of this episode is really, you know, kidney disease and oxalate. So again, if someone has increased urinary excretion of oxalate, then of course a 24 hour urine test would show that it would show that they had high urine oxalate levels. And I've seen different things where it's like, if it's over 50 milligrams a day of oxalates or even above 40 milligrams a day of oxalates in the urine, then that's considered high levels. Um, but that's that's what we're really focusing on is in people with kidney disease who then have high urine oxalate levels. Now, there is something called primary hyperoxaluria and secondary. We're more focusing on secondary because primary is an inherited defect of oxalate metabolism. And secondary is more related to three things, oxalate intake from the diet, um, intake of precursors of oxalate production, and then absorption of oxalate in the gut. So to kind of go through those three things, um, so if we think of the intake of oxalate precursors or like precursors of oxalate production, that's where we talk about vitamin C is a precursor of oxalate production. And that is why it is not recommended for people with kidney disease. And we've talked about this before to take high doses of vitamin C because it can increase production of oxalate um, and cause high levels of oxalate in the body and then also in the urine. So you'll see most kidney specific vitamins only have about 60 to 90 milligrams of vitamin C. Um, you don't want to be having 250, 500, a thousand. I mean, some people take two, three, four grams of vitamin C, and that is way too much. You want to stay away from that if you have kidney disease for this reason. Um, next thing, when we talk about absorption, so about 10 to 15 percent of um, the intake of oxalate is going to be absorbed in the gut, but this can vary based on different things. So if someone has um, fat malabsorption. So let's say they have bariatric surgery, they've had irritable bowel disease, they've had a bowel resection, anything like that where they have fat malabsorption, that can actually increase the absorption of oxalate in the gut and then contribute to higher urine oxalate levels. Um, another thing is if there's just gut dysbiosis, which we talk a lot about the kidney gut access and gut health, but gut dysbiosis, and you might know you have that or something going on with your gut for people who have, uh, you know, a lot of bloating, gas, their constipation, they, um, tons of acid reflux, heartburn. I mean, a lot of those things are signs that there's something going on with the gut, but that can also affect the absorption of oxalates. And then the other thing is um, calcium. So it, calcium binds with oxalate and reduces the absorption of oxalate in the gut. And a lot of times this is what you hear about with with kidney stones, but it's also true for just kidney disease in general, is if someone has high urine oxalate levels, a lot of times it's a problem of their calcium intake. So ensuring adequate calcium intake helps to make sure you're not absorbing too much oxalate in the gut. Um, and then I'm trying to think if there's anything else there. The other thing is, so we talked about that now. Um, so no vitamin C, high dose vitamin C supplementations. We want to focus on gut health and ensuring adequate calcium intake. And then before we even get into actual, how much oxalate are you actually eating in your diet? Um, and then how much is coming out in your urine? It's important to remember that things like 
Hydration is important. Low sodium diet is important. Alkalizing the urine pH with getting enough fruits and vegetables in your diet. All of those are things that can impact how much oxalates in your urine. That has nothing to do with oxalate intake. And then when we talk about oxalate intake, um, I think the tricky thing and why we get so many questions on it is that it's it's just another thing that's kind of tricky or near impossible to really track how many milligrams of oxalate you're taking in your diet because there's not one perfect place to go for that data. And some of it is contradicting, some of it's inaccurate, like old, old ways that they used to measure oxalate content of food wasn't always the most accurate. So you can see things that vary greatly if you look from, depending on what source you look at, I would say probably that Harvard list of oxalate content in food is going to be a good place for you. Um, if you are curious how many milligrams of oxalate are in different types of food. So now how much oxalates in food? So food has, and again, it's in these plant foods. So it can be low, moderate, high, or extremely high oxalate, oxalate levels. Usually a food will be categorized as high in oxalate if it's over 30 milligrams of oxalates. Um, so for example, you know, apples are a low oxalate fruit. Um, kiwi is a moderate oxalate fruit and raspberries are high in oxalates. But when we think of those highest oxalate foods, um, some of those are going to be things like your spinach, beet greens, and Swiss chard and rhubarb have over 500 milligrams of oxalate per serving. So Again, that's just a huge difference between, okay, 35 milligrams is considered high oxalate, but now we have something over 500 milligrams of oxalate. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is if we truly get to the point, we've gone through all those other things we talk about, and you still have high urine oxalate levels, then avoid and remove those super, super high oxalate foods and start there for trying to nitpick with the other things that might be moderate or might be a little bit high. And so again, spinach, Swiss chard, um, beet greens, you could do kale or arugula or mustard greens instead, which are going to be low in oxalate. Um, miso, um, almonds, like I said, raspberries, those are all higher beets. Those are going to be some higher oxalate foods. But if you simply cut out those super, super, super high oxalate foods, typically that is enough for people to see improvements in their urine levels of oxalate. Um, of course, if you are, you know, trying to keep those highest oxalate you know, veggies or fruit out, then you would also want to keep supplemental forms of them or powders of them out. So things like spinach powders or like beet um, powder, even like a turmeric um, powder in these supplement forms where they can be in really high doses, those can also be in high, very high in oxalates. And the other thing to point out, and a lot of times, at least what I saw, and I'll let Dr. Hashmi chime in on this, is a lot of the kind of case reports or um, where people have had kidney issues or like acute kidney injury from a very high oxalate intake. One, it was often paired with a very high dose vitamin C supplementation. It wasn't just the high oxalate intake on their own, but also it was people who were like juicing, um, you know, spinach and all these greens and beets, and they're consuming this, this crazy high intake of oxalates in, in juice form. They were having higher absorption amounts and um, potentially a lot of vitamin C, all of that packed it, you know, and we always hear, oh, juice, detox, cleanses, all this stuff for the kin for the kidneys. Well, it, potentially that could be something that is, is harming the kidneys. So um, I would say that's the biggest thing just kind of summarizing is that it is a concern if someone has high urine oxalate levels, it is a concern for, um, you know, certain types of kidney stones and also for kidney disease. And we do want to treat it. We want to make sure that you are well hydrated. You have a low sodium diet. You are um, helping the urine pH um, with alkalizing fruits and vegetables. You're avoiding high dose vitamin C supplementation. You're ensuring adequate calcium intake and magnesium as well. And then avoiding those very, very high oxalate foods. If you've gone through all of that and you still have high urine oxalate levels, then I would say you can look more at maybe some of those more moderate to high oxalate foods and just make a substitution. Because if you can't have spinach because of that, then again, you can have kale instead, or if you can't do almonds, then you can have another nut in place of it that will be lower in oxalate. 